Hey guys, we are rained out here in uh, the state of Missouri. Wouldn't know right now because the sun's out, but we've got massive uh, storms coming our way again this afternoon. We got a bunch of rain last night and uh, had a, uh, got a client here that we're working with. It's actually a couple of day ventures. So we elected to uh, stay dry and keep the computer dry today and, and uh, tackle it tomorrow. What I've got uh, for you today, guys, is we're going over uh, answering some emails, getting some uh, book work um, updated here, and I uh, got the whiteboard back with me on the road here, or a new one, uh, in case I run into some days along the way and have some time here right, uh, to do these. Um, today's question is an answer kind of segment here is, you know, how to place debris and why. Uh, you know, whether you believe, uh, whether you create, whether you are maintaining, uh, these my you know or mine or or any transition that you're building or corridor or whatever the case is, uh, there's a huge huge um, kind of a, a rhyme and re uh, reason uh, if you will that we need to understand when placing debris along those areas. So today what we're going to do is we're going to dive into this one uh and it's a good it's a good question answer good topic that comes up with clients all over the country uh because i um you know we're really focused on as you know i'm i'm a, I'm a huge transition builder guy uh or promoting that uh you know depending on um you know what your what your structure is on there maybe it's just mulching maybe you have to cut the you know timber out of it uh, all kinds of different things that pertain to that right but um, one of the things is, is what do you, you know, th this answer here, we're talking about this topic, what do we do with the debris? Uh, so we're going to dive into this one, guys. I'm actually going to uh, show you this um, on the board and, and uh, kind of talk you through this and make some illustrations um, on it as we go. All right, so what we're going to uh, chat about first, guys, is the first topic up here. So the header is, as we said, you know, um, how to or to place or where do we go with this debris uh, and why. So the debris that we're speaking of is when you're building these transitions. Um, first of all, number one here, we're going to start with transition. When you're building the transition, um, you are, you know, promoting a line of travel. I always talk uh, through with my clients. Uh, and here on the channel, we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. We are looking to promote the wheel. Uh, so along the uh, along the way on the um, you know finding this or or how we're finding this is if we're uh, you know over here we're, we're uh, trying to leave a little box here so we could write a little diagram here. Let's just use like we do a you know a square uh, forty here, and along the way what we're doing is we're setting in this transition. Um, you know around the property uh, now every property is different and, and the contour is different and everything you know you know that ties into it um, but what we're looking for guys is as we're building this is be your fence row obviously this is the transition that we're promoting around the inside of the property as we're building this what we're doing is this portion of it let's say is just mulched you know maybe it's a it's a lower area where you know there's no timber in it uh, and you know, so your your stand um, ends up you know falling in here somewhere. Your stand is you know uh, our stand assemblage or your stand placement is in here, and the next thing you know, now we have to figure out what we do with that area because it's um, you know it's on the contour lines or you know um, we have a good funnel or a good pinch point, good saddle uh, that led us to the stand location. Now we need to figure out okay how do we promote the line of travel so in that situation let's take that in consideration maybe it's just mulching right uh, so we mulch this in through this with mulching obviously you don't have any debris you don't have to worry about where you put the debris because the debris is gone so this is real dense in here and we just poke a hole through it you know so um, so that section is done well the next section up here you might have uh, you know your next stand might be up here let's say uh, you know a couple hundred yards away and this section ends up being a section of here between you know this is section one this is section two this section ends up being a, an, an area where um, you know what happens is, is that's timber right it's all it's all pole timber it's all you know um, 60 uh, 80 feet in the air and and now you know how do we get the sunlight down to that area and that's what we're talking about today guys as far as the debris obviously on this transition 
uh, through here promoting this line of travel. You know, right now we're not talking about habitat pockets that we're building or stuff like that. What we're doing right now is we're talking about what you do with the debris and, uh, you know, uh, which way to go. So mulching, obviously there's no debris. You know, the, all your mulch line is going to be right through here. The transition's done. Then you get up here, like we said, let's say this is all, you know, um, native or virgin timber in here or hasn't been cut for 25 years, 30 years. Well, you have to let the sunlight uh, down. Uh, let's say this is north um, and then this is south. You have to let the sunlight into these areas in here to promote the sunlight. We want the sunlight to, to drop down in here to make this area thick, right? So we're hunting into this edge. So our access uh, is off the, so as we go here, might as well just keep adding to this one, guys. Um, you know, your access is into there, your foot trails into it. And now what we're doing is we're promoting that. So we're promoting this. What do you do with the debris? We, we've got it laid out. We know where it is. We know where the stand is. Now we need to figure out how to get more, more edge uh, down in front of us. What we're doing with this debris, guys, is that's what we're talking today. Is, is Then we'll jump over here to the big diagram so it makes more sense. But what we're doing is we're always laying these, these trees out at a perpendicular angle away from the transition. So these are the tops. You know, the top, it, it falls away. Uh, what we're going to talk about is this. So what that does is this leaves this open. You are not, you are not removing the stumps. Not removing stumps. That's a huge, huge point that we need to touch on. I've had some clients do that in the past, and now we've got a bunch of cleanup to do. Uh, so on these in here, guys, we're not removing the stumps. You're just flush cutting these because we want the regeneration. So now we have the structure on the ground that funnels the deer through it. We got the light in this area gone. Now all the sunlight's dumping down into here, and this is going to regenerate. So if they fall across, and that's what we'll do here, guys. So this is the idea. This is how we find it. This is what leads us to this point. The next, uh, you know, the topic here is this is the transition going through, and we're doing just that. We're taking this, you know, we're taking this debris and laying this parallel uh, or perpendicular. I'm 90 degrees uh, perpendicular to the trail, right to the line of travel. So this is your, your this is your line of travel, right here, and this, so this is the transition through here. Uh, so perpendicular to it, what this does, this puts more focus on, on the transition, dumps the sunlight down into it. What we're going to talk about here, guys, with this is when you build these transitions, something to keep in mind is, uh, so yes, you are steering deer with this. Yes, this opens up this line of travel through the center. And this is kind of a, um, you know, a way to promote that area past your, your stand uh, location that, let's say, your stand location ends up being here. Or, I'm sorry, that's the Lincoln branch. Obviously, your stand's going to be off the side of it. Uh, your stand location is here. Your foot travel is into it. And, and this whole section through here now, guys, is going to, going to regenerate into, you know, is going to densify into thick uh, you know, uh, proper habitat in here, moving movable food, moving food, as you, you hear me say, from all this rootstock that is down in here that's going to regenerate that, uh, you know, is going to regenerate that woody browse that's ever so important. Uh, so that is why, you know, we place that uh, to the outside. And the whole reason behind this, guys, as we'll talk as we go on here, we're not cattle shooting this. Cattle shooting, when you hear me talk of the cattle shoot term, is if you took these trees and you laid these trees uh, down at a, at a parallel angle to the line of travel and you're cutting this off. Now you're squeezing these deer in between here and that's not what we want. We want to leave this open so this uh, to them looks, uh, you know, it's perforated. So I get the question a lot, well, aren't you just, in, you know, promoting this way for them to, to leave the transition? And yes, that is true, but that, that's a way that you fill, you know, you know, a deer go in and you also, you know, obviously, so they are going in and out of the, you know, obviously they're going in and out of the transition. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not, we're not shutting them off. Now, if it becomes a, uh, if it becomes a situation where, you know, these deer aren't using this through here and for whatever reason is, 
you know, maybe there's some correct habitat on the neighbors or, or interior of the farm or whatever the case is. I mean, it'd be interior of the farm on the neighbors, the opposite of what I'm looking at this backwards. Uh, what that is, guys, is then what you do is you come off the line of travel down here, you know, out here about, you know, so maybe 20, 30 yards off the line of travel. Then you can put a tree down out here in this area here and you can, you know, block this, uh, block this, you know, this opening, if you will, to focus those deer down in here. Well, if they're using this one and, you know, just because of habitat, contour, whatever the case is, well, you come down here and you put another one and now you've blocked that off and now the deer are going to use, you know, just keep sliding down. So yes, you can parallel debris on a transition, but don't parallel the debris on immediately on the transition. This is how we want to build it. And then over the years, this is how we add to that if needed. A lot of times you'll find, uh, you know, most properties guys are, this is the line of travel through. And when this uh, when these aren't here, this is what the line of travel on most properties are, is it's just bypass, right? There's nothing to stop them. And what we're creating by building this transition, obviously we're creating the line of travel that comes in and goes uh, left or comes in and goes goes right. So they'll use this way more, uh, you know, as you, as you build it and you get it cut open and then, you know, two, three, four years down the road as that starts regenerating. So that's what you do uh, with the, the debris and the reasons behind it. So let's go down here to number two, the corridors, same theory. Uh, the corridor is anything pertaining, when you hear me talk of corridors here on the channel, uh, I, I separate the term transition from the, the term corridor. And the reason for that is, guys, anything to me um, that has to do with a corridor is much narrower. It has to do with bedding. So it's, it's either going to a bedding, buck bedding pocket. Um, it's it's uh, in doe bedding, a doe bedding area. Um, it's a corridor corridors to me so these could be you know up to let's just put up to 20 feet wide Th these you know in here this section through here uh, because we're looking to dump the sunlight in these are only five to eight feet wide they're much smaller and what these are guys is this area so this area right in here is only you know only five to eight feet wide is the reason for it is it's internal or near or going out to buck bedding areas tying back to your looking branches stuff like that that we design on here so uh, still the same theory though the debris is to the outside you always want to put this stuff to the uh, all your debris is still uh, on a corridor is still 90 degrees perpendicular to the the line of travel not paralleling we, we done the same thing we're not cattle shooting uh, so this this situation here what we're going to talk about guys so we, we talked about how you know we're finding the transition up here and this led to this you know illustration what we're going to do down here is we're going to actually actually talk about you know the, a corridor in a in a situation so let's do the same you know 40 here and the transitions laid in all the way around the property like i said we're, we're promoting that line of travel that we found uh, that's there. We're just promoting it right and your stands. So let's drop a stand in like we did up above um, You know, you got your stands all the way around the property and So now we have a stand assemblage, right? So then what you do obviously like we're first initial your access is, is all from the outside, you know uh, coming into uh, Coming into the to the um, you know property from the outside as we went over, you know, multiple times in other videos. Uh, but this is kind of, like I said, a diagram that, that, that comes to this. Corridors, guys, five to eight feet wide, much smaller when you hear me talk of corridors. So what I do is, you know, let's say a food plot. Let's let's go up here and say right here is one of your food plots, right? Right on, on here is your your uh, greens. You know, we're, we're promoting a food plot, okay? And then we back this up, obviously, right in here is your, your dough bedding is right on this. Uh, you know, that dough bedding is right on the the uh, food plot, you know, adjacent to the food plot. So these corridors in here, these five to eight feet wide, are what we're breaking these, you know, we're, we're making the, the cubicles in these dough bedding areas right here. So these are five to eight feet wide, and you're just making, you know, cubicles 
you're, so you're making like three in this situation you're making like three cubicles in here these corridors are internal bedding so they're five to eight feet wide all of the debris in here is away you know so if you're first initial cutting these in and you know that's a great great uh, you know hope that the trees are all facing the right way but if they fall across these uh, then you you know you cut them out these are open these are only five to eight feet wide versus this situation here's your main line to travel all the way around the farm could potentially have to be 20 30 feet uh, you know wide uh, so and then another you know corridor situation here guys we can touch on as you hear me talk about buck bedding pockets and obviously as you if you follow the channel you'll know that I'm a big promoter of the line of travel um, is as far as you know connecting everything back to the point of impact uh, another corridor is a corridor a snake trail that goes out from the point of impact out into the property and this is a buck bedding pocket you know so what we go out here this is a and you know this could be something that we could add to this is this is the debris as well kind of a separate video um, because it's it's a you know a more um, it's kind of a, a specialty uh, area buck bedding pocket internal tied back to here this is a corridor five to eight feet wide that goes out to this area so all this debris is tipped to the outside as well I mean it's, these are much smaller than this is five to eight feet wide your debris is tipped to the outside the, this pocket when you get to the end of it I'd leave this door open I call it you know we put these bucks internal of this pocket I initially you know tell my clients to go around and, and fell the trees as much as you can fell the trees to the outside so now we're talking about debris you know you're putting that to the outside and you're kind of creating a pocket in here any of these major trees in here in the center obviously get taken out first if you are a hinge cut candidate even if you're not, not all this in here, you're letting some sunlight down into it. This is the area that we're promoting. And then in here, if you do have any hinge trees, then you tip some, you know, you just kind of place them in here, uh, but not shutting off this main corridor that comes out back to your line of travel. So that's a corridor. That's kind of a, a quick illustration. Um, and we'll go into depth further on that on another video, but that's kind of a quick illustration, guys, as far as the debris when we're talking about uh, corridors. Again, still per perpendicular to the line of travel transitions all perpendicular line of travel uh one thing that we can touch on guys here is whether it's a transition or a corridor either or what you're going to find is this you're going to find that like on a 40 when you have these you know the you know the line of travels promoted all the way around the property you're going to find that this section any tra any transition or corridor that runs north and south these meaning the you know your east and west fence rows the corridors or the transitions that run north and south so it would be this corridor it would be this transition whatever the case is these are going to these uh transitions let's say since we're on this right here these are going to um regenerate on the transition more with more density in the transition that we're cutting out you know these are 20 feet wide this is blown up here and the reason for this is guys if this is south the sun out of the southern sky is going to shoot up these and into these so you have a better chance of all of this you know, you know area really um all of this area really re regenerating you know these corridors let's say it's a corridor behind uh you know food plot and then you know dough bedding and these corridors run east and west or the transition that runs east and west what you're going to find is these transitions these lines of travel that promoted the southern sky you know the sun out of the southern sky are, is going to is going to actually uh you know regenerate more on the northern edge of it up here is the same what you got to be cautious about is hopefully peeling this back a little this rim back in here uh you know if this is your line of travel southern sky and and you know this is all promoting because it's on the north side of it, you know, because the sun is here and, and it, it, you know, you got your trees, all of these trees are tall in here and the trees are, you know, the sunlight tipping over it. Obviously it's going to push the, the debris or the uh, regeneration, I'm sorry, further to the north. So what we got to do is we got to make sure um, on the ones that run east and west on the north half of the properties, guys, maybe you'll have to cut this back a little bit further on this side. 
So your, regen your trees are in here, the top of your trees are up in here, your canopy's gone, so then we get that regeneration on the transition itself. More of a transition talk than it is a debris talk, but that's kind of all how it ties together, right? Uh, so then the, the last one here, guys, that we're going to touch on is the access. One part of this is the, the debris on your accesses. So, the, you know, the last diagram that we'll have here is, you know, coming in into a square 40, like we said, your, uh, you know, we've got your, uh, the, uh, you know, the promoted line of travel all the way around. Your foot trails are coming in from the edge in. Now you have this line of travel right here. Or, or this this access, I'm sorry, this access that we're promoting into a tree stand, right? This is, this access is this line, okay? So this access is a straight line. These are deer travel. These lines of travel are not straight. You want them, and even more so than what this is, you want them, you know, a snake trail around a property. Anytime that you have someone, I can tell when properties are designed from above and from afar because... Uh, there's no edge or there's no, you know, following contour lines. It's just, uh, you know, a, a square line all the way around your property. This is where you need to cut this transition and deer don't like straight lines. Don't promote them. Uh, so what we're doing here with access though, guys, is we're doing just that. We are actually, we, we want to promote a, a straight line for your access from your fence row in. And for that reason is, so it looks like this, you know, you want a straight line from your fence row from the property line in to your tree stand. So this blue line is your access. You want that straight as an arrow as you can to your stand. Then what you do, you want these areas, cattle shoot, you don't want the deer to be able to or want to come down through here and go across. You know, what, what, no matter which way they're, they're headed, you want to keep the deer off from these areas. Now in the perfect world, all of the sign, the deer sign would always be in front of the stand. Well, you know, as well as I do, that doesn't happen. Sometimes because of contour, elevation changes, you know, pinch points, funnels, all that stuff that ties into the success of, you know, especially bow hunting, a lot of these trails are over here. That's why the stand assemblage is in here, right? Your line of travel is up through here that we're promoting. Well, how we do this, the reason we do this is you cattle shoot this area. So this is... You know, I always make these about four foot wide in here, and all the debris then is laid parallel to these guys, unlike 90 degree perpendicular on a corridor or a transition. This is four feet wide, and you want them to be parallel with your access. So you actually put these on here on purpose over the years. You pick up these sticks, and you just keep adding. You just keep adding as you go. You know, you keep, you keep adding, you want this to be, if this ends up being over years, I mean, two, three foot tall, that's good. Here's the reason why. As the deer are, if there's a situation where they could potentially get behind you, so some of these are, you know, I label some of these a blocker and stuff like that on the property. Uh, and there's many things that we could talk about debris, but these are the three major ones. So we'll, let's, let's use this as an example. These deer that could potentially get behind you, you're taking that equation out uh, and promoting more of the movement out in front of your tree stand like we talked guys and for that reason is is they will read this brush pile that is parallel to their movement about 30 to 50 yards before they get to it well I mean will a doe blow over the top of it when she's being chased you know or a deer spooks yes they will but that you know what you want is you want this deer travel to come up through here or down through here let's say and they see this and they just gradually work their way out and around it so whether they start you know here and go out around or whether they're coming this way out and around it they don't want to be behind it and here's the reason why guys is your scent cone out of your tree stand goes like this a lot of folks don't you know that's maybe a separate video that we should do right the the uh, scent cone away from your tree stand is a just a cone it's not inverted the other way it actually leave you leaves you and gets wider as it goes right so the object is is to get these deer out of that scent cone around the front of the stand uh, in front of you taking advantage or you know taking advantage of that so you don't uh, you know the deer don't uh, get stuck uh, behind you or, or have a potential to get behind you and them stagnant deer will get us in trouble as far as winding us right so because uh, obviously our wind is you know coming back from the stand location 
Um, so those are the, the debris talk. Another one I guess we could throw in here is kind of a, a blocker. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're running, uh, the only other parallel um, situation would be as if you've got a, a square 40, let's say, or I mean just any property, but if you've got this and we've got this, you know, promoted line of travel around as the transition um, and there are, you know, reasons to build a blocker in here to promote these deer, you know, to the outside on the transition here, uh, then this actually does get, you know, this debris is a blocker. You want this parallel to it because you don't want the deer to go through it. You know, you want that to be a diversion. So as a blocker, another blocker is, let's say the tree stand is way, you know, kind of, you know, further in, I shouldn't say way, but further in than, uh, because of contour or sign or something like that then what you do is as we we're running these accesses this becomes more of a blocker uh, so these deer coming down through here obviously go out uh, in front of a stand location instead of as they're reading it they're reading it here they're coming out in front of instead of trying to go up behind you and getting getting busted so that's uh, kind of the the three major portions like I said guys we could do a whole uh, video another 15 20 minutes here obviously on the blockers and uh, and internal uh, debris but those are the three major uh, debris what to do with debris and where to put them so I hope I hope that clears some thought uh, you know thoughts up with with folks I know there's a lot of even the, the properties that I was blessed enough to be on uh, early in the year there's a lot of folks out here uh, maybe I'll slide over here to the side so I've got a place to do some editing here and drop some this uh, stuff in. There's some folks out there doing really great uh, with so this year's builds and last year's builds, uh, you know, that we d d designed last year. And then the folks are getting out there and starting to all over the country, starting to implement this stuff. And these questions arise when they start doing this. You know, this is all in your handbooks, uh, but it's good to have somebody to reach out to um, and and uh, you know make sure that this debris is in the right spot you know hopefully uh this this kind of helps you because um you know putting it in the wrong spot means you have to pick it up again you know so let's handle it once not handle it twice uh so keep keep uh, the the good work uh, going here um it's always always good to have you know videos and updates and stuff sent from clients all over the country and um the push is on and the habitat season's in full swing and folks are out on their property, the weather's getting better and uh, the deer woods are, are coming alive with uh, habitat creations, right? So uh, thanks for uh, tuning in guys. I hope this one helps uh, clarify some stuff up, like I said, how to and where to place uh, debris.